This is why China will not go to war with the U.S. They do not want to hurt their relationship with one of their biggest exporters in the world. They export to the United States per year between 520 to almost $600 billion worth of goods to this country. Taking that out of the equation would be a devastating impact on the Chinese government and the people. As the world's most populous nation, you know, China has the most mouths to feed out of any country in the world. Its population reached an estimated, and in the 2020 census, of 1.4 billion people. That's a lot of people to feed. And if you don't have the exports and stuff coming in from our country, as far as food goes, they're pretty much screwed because they cannot feed their own people with what they have, with the land they have, and everything else. They do not have the means to do that. So they need the U.S. to be on their good side, if you would want to put it that way. The Chinese leaders should know far better than most the risk of self-isolation. They have gone through this before, and it did not end very well for their government or for the people. Decades of inward-looking policies left tens of millions of Chinese dead in the country and trapped in poverty. Only after reforms in 1979 did the economic boom began to take off. Severing ties forge over four decades of integration with the West will make an already slowing Chinese economy less, not more productive. It's going to hurt them really bad. It'll hurt them more than it'll hurt us as far as import-exports. And it's going to hurt the world economy will feel the ripple effect of that and everybody will suffer throughout the whole world. This all has been stated by a lot of top analysts and from the Chinese and from the United States governments. China's efforts to reduce its reliance on food imports, which reached in 2020 was $110 billion dollars. Without the imports from our country as far as food, they are destined to fail. No matter how big their military is or how big their country is. Because about a quarter of the country's food imports come from the U.S. Chinese leaders fear that Washington could impose an embargo in the future confrontations that could be arising with Taiwan and everything else with the tariffs and all this kind of stuff as it did back after the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan in 1979 which was a, another very bad time in the world. On another note, according to the Semiconductor Industrial Association there are more than 30 types of specialized semiconductor products categories. Making a chip requires as many as 300 different inputs in one chip, which are in turn processed by more than 50 different types of specialized machinery. Even the U.S., the industrial leader of the world, is incapable of building a completely integrated semiconductor supply chain system. It just, they can't do it. There's too much involved. There's too many pieces that have to come in from every different part of the world. But China reported 
It's planning to spend about $1.4 trillion over the next five years pursuing the goals. The odds of their success in this is very slim. Is all the stuff that they are doing right now over in Taiwan before and after Nancy Pelosi's trip, their show of might and everything else? Is this just a bluff? Is this trying to call the cards to the table? What are they trying to achieve in these difficult times that this whole world is going through? Are they flexing their muscles? Is that what they want to really try to do? Is that part of their plan? They want to see if they maybe can push us over? It's probably not going to work. You see, they stand to lose more than we do in the long term. So I don't believe that China would try and go to war and disrupt what they have built since 1979 and throw it all away for what? If they do, it's going to change the whole outlook of the whole world, the world economy, the world food, it'll change everything. And there's a lot of questions that the Chinese needed to answer, in my opinion, based off of what has taken place over the past few years. But seems to be nobody in our administration are asking those tough questions. So put in the comments below, what do you think? Do you think that China will risk everything that they have built since 1979 when the whole regime changed and they started making progress and started moving forward and their people started having better jobs, better places to live, food to eat, not so many people dying? It's obvious with 1.4 billion people, they may have to reconsider what they are doing. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. I hope that everybody stays safe. Keep prepping. We have too many unknowns and the unknowns is what could get us in trouble if you're caught with your pants down and you're not prepared. Till next time. Catch you all on the flip side.